I've been a self-taught developer for three years. This is what I've learned. What's up dudes? I know guys, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. I have a valid reason and why I wasn't able to upload anything the last couple months. But I am back. I moved in to my new place. And if you haven't noticed, I have a new little friend right here. A little cute five month old toy poodle. Her name is Tofu. Say what's up bro. She's camera shy. I'm sorry guys. She just... <sighs> Come on bro. Alright dudes. <laughs> so I'm back. It's been a crazy last couple months. I've moved to a new place. I have a brand new puppy in my life. A lot of things have changed in my life. A lot of things have been going on. But most of all, um, I finally reached that three year mark as a front end developer. But even more than that, I didn't just reach my three year mark as someone who is a developer, a software developer, but I reached a three year mark, someone who learned code from scratch. Someone who honestly never opened a book. Someone who used online learning, Udemy, Team Treehouse, which is what I used to become a developer in three months. And from that, from just using a website, paying about $25 a month, it brought me to where I am today. Becoming a mid-level front-end developer for Entrepreneur Media, Entrepreneur.com, Entrepreneur Magazine. And so I remember when I when I first wanted to go into this industry as a front-end developer, I remember wondering, I, want, I actually want to find someone who was a self-taught developer with years of experience already. But I had no one to go to, and there was no one on YouTube that actually talked about this. And I want to share my experience on, on what I've encountered as a front-end developer with the doubts that I face and I feel every single day. Coding among people who went to school, who got the degree as a front-end developer. I didn't even know there was a degree for that. Um, people who went to boot camp, all these different things that I faced, and even, even more than that, even facing people who have a degree who've hated on me, who've actually looked down on me simply because I'm self taught and I didn't go to school for this. Actually, I'm pretty much a college dropout. So, this is what I've learned after three years. The first thing I've learned after three years in this industry, funny enough, particularly today, I've always asked my boss questions all the time, and he never made me feel dumb. I'm not saying he made me feel dumb, but he kind of did today. It's the first time in a year and two months. And I asked him a question, and the, his response was, Chris, out of all the things you should know, you should know that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what the question was because I'm that embarrassed. But um, uh, <laughs> it was really humbling to hear that from my boss because I've been in this industry for more than three years already. Recruiters are literally contacting me all the time. And even to this point, I still feel imposter syndrome. I still feel like I don't know enough. And I remember, and this is important because when I got my first developer job, I remember telling myself, if only I had three years of experience, the job that I'm doing at that moment would be easy, which it would have. But I remember even telling myself as well that three years in as a developer, that I will know everything. <laughs> I will know enough. I'll become the best developer there is out there. But funny enough, right, three years in, I still feel like I don't know anything. I still feel like there's so much to learn. And it's funny because this girl who's been a developer in my company, she's insanely good. But what's funny is that even to this day, even though she's really good, she's pretty much a full stack developer now. She has a degree actually. Even she herself feels the exact same way as me. Someone who is self-taught, who has less experience than her. She's had, she has years of experience over me. This is very important to share because this is a feeling that you'll always feel. Now granted, there are some people out there who will talk down to you saying you should know these things you should know what a sitemap is you should know php already you should know the terminal from heart you should not know google and i'll tell you this because i've met people like that and they were college graduates nothing against college graduates by the way but one thing to note to yourself right now to those who are learning or those who are junior developers who are just a year or two in the industry that is completely normal man that's 100 percent normal the second thing i want to talk about which is really important I'm someone where when I really am into something or passionate about something, I go all in. And I remember telling myself, if I really love this, I will code all the time. And I remember I'll study for three hours and I'll feel bad at myself and guilty for not studying three more hours, right? I remember one year in into this industry already as a developer, thinking, why don't I study enough? Two years in, why don't I study enough? Three years in, why don't I study enough? And I, I used to always think that coding has to be my life, like literally what I do all day, but it's not. 
like I love what I do for a living. When I go to work, it does not feel like a job. When I go to work, it feels like I'm doing something that I love. It's a hobby. It's my passion. It's what I love to do. I get, I enjoy it because coding is like creating to me. But the second thing I learned is that coding should not be your life because I thought it should be if I'm a real developer, if I'm really passionate, but that's not true. I do code at work and I do study languages after work as well and i do that and i stream it on twitch as well right so if you want to hit me up hit me up on twitch.com chris sean and i'll put in the link description below but coding isn't my life and i remember feeling guilty about that because i talk about it so much but i don't think about code every day i have a life i go hiking i go to the beach in the weekends i go to the movies with my friends in the evenings if i'm not gaming right and i game a lot <laughs> and i don't think about code all the time and that's great like i'll code and i do a lot but Three years in, what I've learned is that coding cannot be a life. The people around you are what matter most because that's why you did it in the first place, right? Um, and, and so don't feel guilty about that. So the third thing I wanna talk about right now is really interesting. Three years in, three years and two months into this industry, I do not feel like I am the best developer out there, right? I do not feel like I'm an amazing developer. But interestingly enough, if you go on my LinkedIn, if you go to my Instagram, on my Instagram, I post stories all the time of recruiters contacting me, making dumb requests and messages too. It's really funny. But what's really crazy is that once you hit that three year mark, honestly, you will always have a job. It's insane. Literally, if not every day, every other day, okay, every other day, I am literally getting messages emails, even direct messages on my Instagram of people wanting to interview. It's insane. Like I'm humbled. I got people from North Carolina, Charlotte. Uh, it's called Red something. I forgot Red, not Red Nation, but Red, I forgot what it's called. It's a mark, digital marketing company. Um, they actually reached out to me. They offered me a position to move there. And I actually knew someone who worked there because of LinkedIn and they had a great opportunity. They were willing to relocate me as well, paying for all those fees. And what's really funny is that when they gave me the job offer, I just didn't reply. I just was thinking about it and I realized I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and I forgot to respond to them. Three weeks later, that person still contacted me, still seeing if I wanted position still and it was open. Amazon reached out to me twice, twice. The first time in the interview Amazon. I don't want to go to Seattle. Second time, another department of Amazon reached out to me for a front-end developer position, which is insane. Like, you will always have a job, right? It's insane. But three years in, all the sacrifices I made, the sweat, the blood, you know, not hanging out with friends for those few years or months, just really focusing on my career, it really becomes so much more worth it. Looking, looking at where I am today, man. Like, I'm not trying to talk down to anyone. <laughs> it's crazy because like when i look at all my friends when i look at all my friends and i look back three years ago all my friends literally are doing the exact same thing not that i'm better i'm not but i remember when i first started learning code i told them guys you need to do this with me man you could change your life in months and they didn't do it i'm like all right i'm trying to help their lives change they didn't do it so i made a youtube channel and i helped hundreds if not thousands of other people to do it right and like my life has completely changed I know people who no longer are, who are unemployed now and can't even get a job now right now and they can't even pay the rent right now it sucks but that's one thing i'm so thankful about going to this industry is that i still have a job up to this very day you will have a job as long as you like keep yourself valuable last thing i want to talk about there's a lot that i learn but last thing i want to talk about is this i've been saying this for many years guys i've been saying this for a very long time but one thing that you guys need to know is this is that at the end of the day, no one gives a damn about you. Whoa, Chris, 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 come on, man. You need to relax, right? But honestly, at the end of the day, your future is not determined by someone just giving you an opportunity. Your future is based on you. And, and to go to this in even more detail, let's say, for example, let's say you have a good job. Let's say you are a developer now. You have to understand, yeah, that company will take care of you. They will pay you. They'll give you good benefits whenever you need a day off, whenever you need you get sick, whenever you need to take care of something really important or something emergency happens in your family, you need to go. They'll take care of you in that regard. At the end of the day, what's really important to know is that company doesn't care about you. What they care about is what you can give to them. What they care about is what you could bring to the economy. What they care about is what value can you bring to them? What can you do for them? Because please understand this. And I've seen this happen in companies. I've seen this happen at big companies. I've seen this happen at small companies. I've seen this happen at companies that, that I endorse. I've seen people, the moment they lose their value at that company, you will be let go. Why is it so important? Because this is how the real world works. 
It doesn't matter how nice of a person you are. Well, it doesn't matter that I've been a developer for three years. It doesn't matter what languages I know now. What's important is at that moment, are you valuable to that company? At that moment, what can you give to them? Because you are only important to them as long as you're able to give something. This is so important. Why? Because I know so many people and it's sad because they no longer try to keep their value or grow. They lost their jobs and they couldn't get a job anymore. Let's say, let's just say I was to die today and someone was to log into my channel and make a video letting everyone know that Chris died. Yeah, people might be sad for a couple minutes and then they move on because no one will give a damn if I died. That's, that's how I, I have to see it that way. Why? Because when I see it, that's literally how the world really works. What am I going to do? I'm going to make sure that I remain valuable. I'm going to make sure like, why haven't I been uploading videos like I used to? Because yeah, even though YouTube pays for everything, which is nice, it's not always going to be there. So what did I need to do for the last couple months? I needed to build my portfolio. I need to learn React.js. Why? Let's say I get let go of my company. Boom, I'll get a job easily. Actually, even if I didn't know React.js right now, I'll get a job in just a couple months, really pretty easy, if not one or two months. But because I'm learning React.js, because I'm learning Node.js, because I'm getting better as a developer on my side hustle and just improving my skill as an engineer, that alone will protect me and make sure I'm valuable and I can take care of myself. You have to understand this as yourself, especially as not just a current developer, especially also as an aspiring developer. Why will a company hire you or pick you up? Because of what you can give to them. Why will a company hire you? Because you're able to give them something they need. Then what is your goal as an aspiring developer? You need to build a project. You need to build a portfolio. You need to learn skills where a company will think, damn, I need that guy. Damn, I need John. Damn, I need Bomb. Bomb? Bob. I need this person. Why? Because your value is determined by the economy. I fear this. I don't want to just like, I've been having such an amazing life the last three years. I want to make sure that I keep growing, that I keep getting better as a developer. I want to make sure that I take care of myself because at the end of the day, my life, my dog's life, right? is dependent on me. That's why I keep doing what I do. I mean, I've learned so much the last three years, guys, a lot. There's so much I can talk about and I'll talk about that in my upcoming videos. More than anything, this is to everyone. I know how hard it is. I know how much sacrifice you have to make. Trust me. I've had to, um, and I sacrificed a lot to get to where I am today. And sometimes I wish I didn't have to sacrifice them, but I had to, and I did it and I'm here. It is worth it. But anyways, I don't want to make this video too long. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you can, like this video. If you can, leave a comment. They encourage me so much to keep posting videos. But if not, thanks for taking the time to watch me. Love you guys. This is Krishan. This is Life Web Developer. And I'm out. Peace.